how long do you want me to go? Like two minutes? Give me 30, minutes? Give me 30 seconds and we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, start you yeah. 45 minutes. <laughs> Batteries run out in 45. So I, I'm willing, I currently, uh, as of today, I work in Siemens Healthcare. Um, <laughs> we are part of the Siemens umbrella, I guess. Um, for the past five years, I've been working on artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, before, the, uh, before the pandemic, I was director of engineering. Uh, but I guess um, um, I was always fascinated by AI and I grew up watching Terminator movies. So uh, this was some, maybe this was my midlife crisis or something. Thing, but I thought I need to learn this. I got this heavy book to learn about AI. Uh, I put a note here. You can maybe you can see. Sure. It's the, a only it's a I'm the only reason I'm the only reason I'm showing this book is don't buy this book <laughs> 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 because the treatment was very academic. So I'm hiding the names. I don't want to give anybody bad rap or something. But it was a very academic treatment. Uh, I really feel AI is a much simpler topic to teach and learn. Okay. And uh, I've been on a mission for the past. Uh, a few years now, five years to evangelize AI, uh, fight for a couple of patents in uh, AI and machine learning. Wow. I've written various articles. Uh, I've been, as you, as you, as we met, Mulan, uh, uh, healthcare conferences. Yes. Yeah, our listeners don't have attention spans that long. <laughs> <laughs> I told it. Wait, I told it go 45 minutes. This is the de- this is the TikTok generation. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. So they can handle about two right. sentences. Do, me, do me a favor. Pull your pull your camera down. Just a little bit, so we get a little bit of oh, more of a shot. There we go. Perfect. Oh, uh, a little more headspace. A little more. Uh, perfect. perfect. So, perfect. so let's just perfect. Dig, dig right into a balloon. Um, yeah. Using <laughs> sort of the conventional. Um, the conventional notions of what AI, not the notions in that book you have, but people now talk about AI on the one hand and ML and machine learning on the other hand. Um, I've come to believe they are now currently used to apply to two different sort of segments of the industry. Maybe I'm right, right or wrong, but in 30 seconds, TikTok uh, timing. Um, what's the difference between ML and AI when people use those phrases uh, colloquially? Is that the, or Collo- colloquially? Colloquially. colloquially. Um, so, exactly. machine learning really is a subset of AI. Um, AI, uh, AI is a thought help or an idea to train a machine to do something, right? You train something. And, and machine learning is a means to achieve that objective. So think of AI as an objective, and machine learning is a means to achieve that objective. That's in a classical well, sense, well it's a Venn diagram where AI is a superset and machine learning is a subset. Okay, that's not the answer we were looking for, though. I'm looking for the answer that justifies what I told Jeff so he doesn't think I'm a complete idiot. I'm going to need you to read his mind before you answer the next right, question. Right, you have to know the answer oh. before you <laughs> well, I forgot to read the mind. That's okay. We'll send you one. We'll okay, send you one. just quickly. He's, he's negligently uh, intelligent. <laughs> So here's my sense, which is that I agree completely with what you just said on the one hand. On the other hand, I feel like AI is getting thrown around in the press these days, more referring to what ChatGPT is up to, even though that itself is a separate sub-discipline, um, and that ML is still traditional, traditional well, would ML. You, would you consider AI as the product category? It is. I'm just saying the way it's used in the news. In the news in the well, news. the news is always wrong. Oh, I know. But <laughs> about technology in particular. I know, but maybe somebody reads the news who watches it. But nobody watches it. Nobody, why nobody reads it. Probably nobody doesn't reads. Matter. Your answer is great. Don't worry about it. We just doubled our, our, our readership or our, vision, our viewership. Uh, Why? Because Melinda's going to watch it. Because Melinda's going to watch it. Oh, Ben. Oh, Ben. Oh, ben. So we tripled. Oh, Ben. Well, Ben won't watch it. He's, we're, he's we're got up, sense. We're up 40%. Melinda, so. <laughs> Belin, Melinda, do you promise to watch this so we at least have one viewer? Yeah, I will. <laughs> my wife and kids. And the wife and kids. Three views because I'll have my wife and kids watch it also. Hot oh. diggity dog. Well, they may fire you after this. So. Here's the thing. What, one of the things that I'm concerned about with AI, just to kind of throw a wrench in there, is it's not doesn't seem to be too confidential. Like if I ask something of ChatGPT, ah, you walked into I, the trap. I did some work the other day, and I was like, all right, well, help me make sense of this. If I was going to do something like this and this and you this, don't want to right. You don't want to check on personal body You're, issues. Yeah. No, no, no. You're, so, yeah. so you're by the time you're training, it assumes to be training a public model. Oh, yeah. And I totally get it. Model. I totally get it. So I, yeah, he's going to push for On the now. public model, I'm signed in on my Google, right? So or now it knows Google. where it came from, who's written it up. And by the time I pick up my phone right. and go on Instagram to check my feed, 
I'm now being advertised in the topic that I was literally just researching using right. ChatGPT to write me. Don't out. flatter yourself. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Immediately. So I was looking up um, CGMs and, and um, uh, non-invasive glucose monitors and things like that and write me a plan to do X, Y, and Z. And by the time I picked up my phone, 30 seconds later, you sure I know. had 10 different companies advertising yeah, so CGMs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get it. So that's unrelated, little, not verbally. What uh, do you want Malin to tell you about your foil? Is there a problem where uh, a publicly facing chatbot is is then in our homes, in our lives, in everything that we have? Are we training it with nonsense by it listening to my garbage and then listening to Mark's stuff and well, listening to Dave's stuff? Seeing your garbage, it's true. And, but then, but then it's kind of garbage in, garbage out, right? Turn it into the six thousand dollar toilets we were talking about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then we were we were just down in the Kohler store downstairs in Ann Sachs, and we we're looking at the. Uh, the uh, toilets down there, <clears throat> and you know, there's Internet of Things and connectivity to these these devices. But you know, is my toilet in the future going to be advertising no, 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 to me? Well? Those are two different issues. One yeah. is one's not an AI question. I don't think. And the other I don't thing think is, it is. So let's let Melinda answer the first. One. Fine, fine. Go ahead, Melinda. <laughs> Did you see a question? Hear a question? Is anything we do in in ChatGPT or in these publicly facing models? Um, yeah. being used by Google nefariously to uh, to take over our homes and our sleep. No, uh, so first of all, let's clarify a couple of things, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, like, I like what you said. It's all garbage in, garbage out. The reason why you are getting such good performance from, say, ChatGPT is because it was trained on quality data from Wikipedia, right? Yeah. So, of course, you're going to feed, if you feed Instagram posts and Facebook uh, posts, you're going to get garbage. Uh, so, so, so the, the, the accuracy uh, and the authenticity of the response from uh, any chat GPT or any chat box is really dependent on what that model was trained on. That's number one. Right. Uh, regarding your other question, whether all your garbage and stuff is going to get into a machine learning model, I don't think so, because training machine learning, uh, deep learning models and uh, large language models takes a lot of effort and money, right? Yep. So nobody's going to waste their millions of dollars on training and algorithm that nobody will care for. Got it. Right. Now so there, there has to be some commercial value. Now there's also like like the free model of ChatGPT, I believe, is a, is limited to a certain subset of uh, of the internet, meaning it, it's only current up until like. 2020, and then uh, the, the paid for version is live on the internet now, right? So, what are the benefits of having a closed AI model where it's it's limited to its history, and also having an open AI model where it's looking at everything out there right now, and then and then using that to generate? Response? Do you have a sense that Jeff was prepared so, for this podcast? So, he's, got, he's got a last. These are personal problems. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, so first we need to clarify and make sure we are using the terms correctly. I think we are using the term AI when we really mean. Gen Generative AI. Generative AI is really a subset of AI. So let's first get a separate that. Okay. As far as generative AI is concerned, right? Uh, now you talked about large language models, right? They are always a closed system. Uh, it's just that the, the older, the free version of ChatGPT was closed 2020, and maybe a newer version is uh, closed more recently. But we need to differentiate between ChatGPT and Google. Google will always give you the latest information, right? Because sure. it is not, Google engine is not trained. Of course, they are going to integrate AI and generative AI. Yep. But the difference I think we need to appreciate is that uh, any large language model is always limited by the training that it is done. Uh, Google for our search engine is always looking for latest information. So any, any large language model is always closed. With one single caveat, now they're doing something called uh, RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, what does that mean? If you have, say, new information from your organization, right, uh, training a large language model is very expensive. So what we do is we take this hybrid approach where we use the language ability of a large language model and then simply augment extra information which is specific to your domain or your company. And then we have some intermediate layer which does like a vector search, meaning it searches the information that you have provided, extra information. Yep. And then it uses the language ability of the LLM and tries to put it in a response and makes you feel as if your information was used for training, but it is not training. It's just, it's just making some smart references. Got it, okay. That makes Why sense. is it not possible to, um, 
I understand seeding the model for, um, say, chat GPT with uh, training data that humans have poured over and um, curated. I get that. Why is it not possible to train even publicly available models in real time? Why is it not possible to train them in real time, given the base of knowledge they now already have? What's the fundamental holdup? So, so it is not the holdup is not in terms of a rule or anything. Just so essentially, what happens is when you train a model, is think of it as a complicated web of memory locations and weights, some parameters, right? For example, ChatGPT has billion parameters. So when we train the when we train the large language model, essentially we are identifying the values of those random parameters, those billions of parameters, right? So. It is not like we are restricted, it's just that if you do retrain that, you're going to go through that entire effort of feeding that information and then it reconfiguring those parameters with the new information that you provided. So the limitation is not on the availability of information, the limitation is on the cost in retraining a model. So wait a minute, so is it a cost, is it a cost, are you are talking about the cost involved in, um, is that called back propagation or no? No, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. Is that the cost? Yeah. I'll, I'll come to back propagation in a minute. <laughs> so but the cost is referring to this GPU and the power usage and the resources that are consumed in training a large That's language model. Easier. That's what I mean by. It. Okay. Yeah. So, and you don't mean the cost in terms of human cost, but you mean in terms of power consumption and in processor resources. Absolutely. That's a thing. So why, how much power would it take to, how much additional power, say the current, uh, say ChatGPT or whatever <coughs> Google is running, but let's say ChatGPT uses what we'll say is one unit of power, which is roughly equal to the output of the sun over 10 years. Um, if you were to make it trainable in real time, would you need two powers of two suns, or would you need like a black hole of a million suns? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so, I do not far. have the information in terms of what is... He understood it. Oh, he, got it. he gets it. <laughs> uh, but uh, what I believe is we can convert that into a dollar amount. And then uh, my, my, my understanding is that, of course, some of this information is not public. This is a private company, right? Uh, but nobody, nobody watches this podcast. It's okay. It's, it's completely top secret at this point. Nobody watches it. They have <laughs> much better sense than that. They own you and your family. family. It's space power cooling. Yeah, effectively. Yeah, but I want so, the number. So, I want the number. Here's, but, uh, here's, that's where you're hosting. That's well, what we're, we're, I mean, I, I know you want to. Well, give us the number. It Two sons or a billion sons? It depends. Well, that's not an answer. Well, give me a, an example. I'll give you an example. Well, Lynn knows I'll something. You, I'll give you a real world example. Yeah. So, uh, well, well, Lynn, you, you thought you were going to get to talk on this. You're <laughs> not correct. <laughs> you're familiar with uh, Bitcoin mining, right? So that's more on the, on the blockchain side of things, right? Blockchain. So, so here's a here's something that I didn't understand before yesterday. I read an article uh, Monday night or Tuesday night, uh, and it, it was a pretty scary article. It, I was familiar with data farms and how much energy they consume, and AI is a big part of that, and it's using a, an infinite amount of energy, just just churning through it, right? But what about Bitcoining, Bitcoin mining right, uh, farms, right? And so there was an example of a, of a community in Texas that had recently had a gas plant and there were no health issues until the gas plant invited a Bitcoin mine to uh, co-locate on their property. Right. And as soon as they set up those fans to cool down their computers, they had hundreds of computers in these big containers. And as soon as they flipped on the switch, people got um, nausea, cardiovascular problems. The decibels cranking off of this farm were 70 to 90 decibels. Uh, people were getting vertigo. The doctors offices had lines out the door and everybody in the community was sick. This Our, sounds like a conspiracy theory. But no, it's not. It's not. It's this is a real thing. It, but it, before it now, does your, does your dad read the National Enquirer? Before now, here, all of these farms were in remote places. Are we going to have data farms and AI farms in our backyard to, to power this obsession we're going to have with ML and AI uh, 
uh, in the near future that it's going to affect all of our health. Well, Melinda is a savant, so he'll be able to tell us. So, so um, I, I do not think that's going to happen, right? Um, so this might be uh, NVIDIA trying to sell chips. So they, they're trying to create, <laughs> Possibly. So, so they're trying to create this hype that that's what everything is going to happen in the AI world. I, I don't think so. So if you hear, there are other there are other approaches to AI, like for example, if you listen to uh, Yen Lekun, he's the TV officer of Meta. He's a he's a professor, university professor. He was a guest here last week. Yeah, he was on the show last. He was week. on the show last week. Oh, Yen Lekun was on the show. He's well, we had a picture of him from the magazine, and we posted it up there, and we kind of talked. Did you tell me through our voices? <laughs> I, I did. I apologize. I apologize in advance for David, right? Yeah, I, you I, thought I, this was just, like, <laughs> just a general was, disclosure. He believed us. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm telling you, this is this is about as as good as his behavior is. This is this is, this more, is him on his best behavior. You have provided more factual information than we've had in 81 episodes. <laughs> so, it's too much. Good. Or, or, or three or four, because this <laughs> is a sub. Segment, okay. a sub -segment of the He's answering. Right. So, We're listening. so I, I guess I just have to cut you guys and keep jumping in. Just yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't mind us. No. <laughs> like we can leave the room. <laughs> it might it might improve matters. You'll be losing your job after this anyway. No, so no, yeah. <laughs> keep going. Go on. So, yeah, so I was saying, so uh, so he has a different approach. He's saying generative AI is not really the answer. He has a different architecture, okay. which we could achieve the same results in more efficiency. So I'm I'm not a proponent that everything is to be generative AI. We need all these resources for training and all that. Sure. That is only because of the current generative AI uses a certain approach. Got it. Tomorrow we may have a new model with a completely different architecture that does not require so much of training resources. Got so it. I would say, less, this is like AI is a moving target. We cannot say this is what we're going to get. Six months from now, nobody can tell what is the new model it will be completely different well, from what we no, see. You know, you know who can tell? And so all we have to do is what's the name of that new stock market thing? There's a new fund where you watch what the Congress people are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, like leader, leader stock or something. Yeah, leader it's stock. Do you know that one, ben? I mean, there's one. There's one just called sub subversive whales. Yeah. yeah so so it's what, what is Nancy Pelosi? Melinda, if we go, what is, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. Melinda, if we go watch what the congressmen and congresswomen are investing in, will we actually know what the companies are that are doing this? <coughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. See, I'll be very honest. If somebody tells you that they know what is going to happen in AI in the next six months, they are they are just lying or guessing. Full of crap. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll jump. I'll jump into that. I'll jump in front of that. I'm never. There's a bidet downstairs. This is true. I'm never. I'm never afraid to wade into that. So here's here's another example. And Ben, you shared this with me the other day. So in in the metaverse, and when we get, let's say we put, we're gonna have to summarize this podcast at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So let's say let's say we put on a, a headset, right? And before the rendering of that image, whatever in front of us is constantly changing and there's lots of information, very high throughput of data, right? Yep. Uh, in the future, explain what just came out this last week, right? So this was kind of foundational of using less data to produce a similar experience in three dimensions. Go. That was called uh, Gaussian. Look into the camera here. Yeah, okay. So that was called Gaussian splotting. It was actually pretty... Check, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, no, go, go. It's pretty intense. So... Uh, there used to be this really popular thing. I'm pretty sure people still do it all the time. But you grab like a phone on your, or you grab an app on your phone, and you just scan basically a three image of the model. Let's right? say it's lidar. Yeah, yeah, pretty. It's lidar basically. Yeah. Um, except what Gaussian splatting is, there's a lot of really obnoxious math that I haven't bothered looking into. But Landon well, knows it. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to hear more about it. It's right. scary. Summarize. But Summarize. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, produces, it produces basically a 2D image of what was originally 3D uh, data of all different aspects of that. It flattens it. Ben, you couldn't have said that. And, and it'll flatten it. No. There's no problem with the wrong? guy. No, no, no. You are yeah, yeah. right. You are right. So, so yeah, he cuts it. you off and he finishes. Yes. Well, like, <laughs> he has to say you're right because is. you're as wrong. Well, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a drink. drink. He yeah. could be We're going to bring out some right? family problems. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what it does is it flattens <laughs> it. It takes out a lot of that excess data yeah. that didn't need to be but there. That's a classic codec. And then give, yeah, yeah. And it, but then gives you, but, but it's, Who it's knew Gaussian. You that word? It's Gaussian, Gaussian what? It's Gaussian splatting? Splatting. 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 I mean, it literally is just taking like samples that's, of that's the even what, That's what this is. What, what, that's what video conferencing is. I came out of that industry. This Well, we all might be, right? We might be in a black hole right now. This is like Gaussian splatting. The codec just takes. They, in order to transmit enough stuff through a small pipe, 
it's not resending, it's not rebuilding that whole screen that you we're mean, looking at. This is the same room as him? You shouldn't have mentioned Zach Lowe's earlier. Well, we should <laughs> He's so, got my land, can you make sense of this garbage? No, I was hoping it would lead somewhere, so keep going. So, 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 <laughs> you know, I've done for years and never done this. We're going to wrap it up. So, here's my point. It's, you mentioned if somebody knows what's happening six months from now, I believe that the goal is going to be to flatten a lot of the things that we see, take out all the excess garbage that's not being considered as part of the algorithm or whatever we're writing for the output, and, and that cuts down on the data needed and the energy needed to run these algorithms. And you know who knows correctly. what's going to happen six months from now? No. Or six or no. no I, read, I read a Harlan analysis. Not. You remember Harlan Ellison? Harlan Crow? No, Harlan Ellison. Oh, Harlan Crow. He's got a shit. He probably knows. Well, he, he probably, probably knows. knows. Well, because he's only paid for comics now. It's happening. Okay, but now Harlan yeah, Ellison. We, we got our political check mark. Uh, <laughs> Politics plays I'm sorry. So Harlan Ellison wrote that's that in, in 60 to 6,000 years. That's, yep. that's a mark number. Yeah. Or is a magnitude. Sure. Everyone will be sitting around uh, really. smoking uh, crack, okay. and uh, there'll be a few people trying to run the world. Okay. okay. That, was, that was what I was saying. We're not there now. We're not, We're not there now. No. So Hunter. No, Hunter okay. six, six, six hundred. You, you never read that Harlan Ellison? No, I was saying Hunter Biden. And oh, other people oh, control okay. the world. Check, please. Hey. <laughs> so <laughs> take it to go. Here we go. <laughs> We'll do a live. Screw okay. it. We'll do a live. Okay. So here's what, my point. What was your point? Is that you the me. biggest problem right now with AI you him and all? generative AI yes. and, and all of this stuff is the, the, yes. the yeah. ultimate consumption. And we're still consuming, 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 whether it's energy or space or data or land or otherwise. How do we simplify oh so that the generative AI isn't going to bankrupt us as we're going? So, so, there is no generative AI. so I, I definitely have some thoughts on that. Okay. Good. Awesome. Bring some 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 someone someone with some reason. Yeah. Oh. So, so first of all, I, I think we are putting too much stock in just generative AI. There is a lot of AI which is not generating. So let's make sure we put give the right attention. Yeah. I would put 50-50 at most. Okay. Now, what generative AI has done is that it has created that excitement. Yeah. It now executives knows what AI is. Everybody can you know just can go on chat GPT and type something in the get. Sure. So it has given that advertisement. So it is so generative AI is the generative AI is the marketing department of AI. Got it. That's but a good way to put it. Just marketing point. something doesn't make you sell. Awesome. You got to make some product out of it first as well, right? So I am seeing the what is the product. Generative AI is the marketing department. The actual product is the business value that you can get out of using machine learning in AI. Yeah. Right? Is, are so for example, I think. For example, we say let him cook. Let yeah, cook. go, go. So, so, so let's say in healthcare, right? You, you're looking at images, right? X-ray yep. and all that, and you're trying to detect diseases. Now, we also have lab da data, you know, all the testing that happens in a laboratory, you know, when a physician orders. Then there's this population data about aging, sex, you know, prehistory. All of data could be combined into a multi-model, and now we can predict what diseases a person can expect to have, and have the treatment plan customized to every individual. So that's where the value is as far as healthcare is concerned. Hyper-personalized hyper medicine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are we there yet or not yet? We are, I would say, in five years' time, we would be having precision medicine, medicine customized to each and every one of us. We will definitely, and I, if my prediction goes wrong on that one, I'll be fine with that. But one thing I'm almost certain is that we will have multi-model, uh, multi-models, which will combine your X-ray data with your lab data, with your other physical parameters, and we'll be doing a much better job in predicting what disease you're likely to have. So you can preemptively start looking into, you know, what are you susceptible of? And maybe why is this? Maybe why is this AI and not? Um, do you remember SPSS from the old days? Statistical package uh, for awful. the social sciences? Yeah. Do you remember that from college? Yeah, we did that in our MBA program. All right. You make one little mistake and then the whole thing doesn't work. Different issue. That was my experience. <laughs> Why is, what does AI bring to um, statistical analysis in, in regard to your healthcare example? Oh, well, that was so well phrased. I love yeah. that question. I, what a, well, say what a great question. But I think part, partly it's to summarize all the billions of documents and things that are out there no. as an initial thing. I want find it all. No, it's, I heard this from a guy that's a practitioner. I know, but the land will tell you it's bullshit. So I want to offer, offer that up as a first. Is it possible that uh, 
is summarizing all the stuff to help customize a treatment plan. Summarize? How do you summarize things? Because it reads everything. It's, it's bullshit. Easy. It's completely, how do you summarize things not knowing what the goal is? I'm glad you were going because that's exactly what is going on. Right? Bullshit. So let's just, yeah, let's not. No, uh, no way. Mark with no surprised. way. No job, Mark. way. This is a first. Are we going to edit this? Are we going to edit this out of the video or is this? Oh, hell no. no we, we don't edit out. anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's a hand waving. You can wave your hands. <laughs> we're going to take a so, quick commercial break. So, uh, <laughs> Okay, and we're back. We're back. What happened? All right, are we back? Okay, yeah, we're back. Uh, so, so, so I, I think I, I think let's let's first understand the difference between statistics and AI. Okay. Statistics requires the innate knowledge of statistics or the data that you have. Yeah. Dummy. How you? So typically you come up with like an, in a statistical model, you essentially know what that mathematical equation is behind that hidden behind that model, right? Yeah. What AI does is it <laughs> takes that grunt work out of that for you and it does that model in the background. You don't even have to know what is the math behind it. It just gives you darn the good results. As long as you feed quality data, it'll give you results. I it's thought like a black box. Melinda, I thought that I thought that when you ran is he still in the image? I hope not. I Wait, can you look? Uh, my, Hold on. Yeah, is he, he still is, there? He is. Yeah, 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 we were yeah. hoping Mark had migrated off the camera. Um, oh, oh, oh. But Melinda, I thought that Dead you center. could run bunches of cross correlations with SPSS and essentially throw every variable at every other variable to find out exactly what you said. So you didn't need to know the math behind it. Right. So go ahead and respond to that. All right. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't get your question. Say that again. Oh, <laughs> there wasn't a question. <laughs> The question, the question was, <laughs> you had said that in, in an AI model, you don't need to know the math. And okay, that's fine. Let's say you don't need to know the math. But the end result still ends up being cor a correlation, does it not? Isn't AI yeah, ultimately yeah. producing correlations? So it, it, it is. Yeah. Okay, so let's say we have a black box on the one hand, and we have sort of standard statistics on the other hand. And we take the standard statistics package, Chef's favorite SPSS, and we ask it to run as many cross correlations as it can, what's the end result? How does that end result differ from what ChatGPT is doing? Please tell me it's a stupid question. Just please. Isn't that what my brain does on a regular basis anyway? No, but he's, we're doing it across multiple variables. You can't see the correlations. Do you follow the point, which is you're, you're saying that ChatGPT or the future AI will be marvelous because it can find correlations. I'm saying, yes, we can do that anyway using sort of standard techniques without the risk of hallucination. Oh, that's true. That's um, true. So, so first of all, Don't right? Um, most statistical techniques, right? What do they do? They they build a model, right? You have some output that you care for, and you feed some inputs, and it builds that relationship, right? Yes. In terms of similarity, a statistical technique and an AI technique does the exact same thing. So there's no difference. Okay. Now, where I think it differs is that um, because AI tends to be more black box. Right? Scary. Now, Scary. It, it can handle a lot more information that would be hard to process in the, using a standard statistical tool, for example. Yeah. Uh, for example, give me a statistical tool that will hear an audio voice and look at a diagram and look at some pictures and give some response. So now, as you see, some Gen AI models can give multi model, right? I don't know if you've seen the latest. Oh, yeah, it'll build you a PowerPoint, it'll make you a video, it'll yeah, do whatever you want exactly. on the topic. So, okay. So we can't have, a, have you, can you think of a statistical technique that will do that? I don't know. No, but no, well, it's two dimensional this. relatively Hold speaking. Well, why, why should we trust something that we can't understand? <clears throat> so, so there. You know, so when, when you start using ChatGPT, the first thing it tells you is that, you know, this you could you could have results that are not true, right? So you yeah. have to take it with a real number. So check your work. Yeah, but, but you're, talking about medical, you're talking about medical applications, so our, our you, so you're a surgeon, and the surgeon says to the patient, you know, frankly, we can't tell what's wrong, but I'm going to cut your brain out because that's what ChatGPT told me to do. So first of all, ChatGPT. That's what happened to Mark, by the way. We have a case in point is Mark. <laughs> so ChatGPT. <laughs> He's here all week. He's here all week. I think we need to resist this temptation that generative AI is AI. Okay, let's first get this out of the way. Right? So when we are looking at X-rays and images, right? Now you know the classical problem. Radiologists don't have so much time to spend on every each and every patient, right? So what we have done now, we have created a model which can be trained on millions of images. And 
what it will do is now it will act as an assistant to a radiologist. So instead of the radiologist spend having to spend time on each and every case, the model will tell you, hey, these are red cases. These are the ones I want you to focus on. These are very easy cases. Don't even bother. I can give you the answer. No cancer. Don't worry about it. Right? That's like so what this tool. So what this tool will do is it will be able to make the radiologist more effective and efficient. Well, either and that or yeah, this, this, it's the same or better than he you know, Now we're going to just read about him. We're going to read about the curve, whatever. The radiologist walking out in the middle of the procedure and uh, going in and getting coffee at Dunkin' Donuts. No, but I think if you take it out of no. medical realm, because I have experience of this with my work life, we will use machine you learning you and work. visual inspection. I do. Do they pay you? Uh, quite well. <laughs> um, visual inspection to go look at Dear anomalies. Dear IBM, pay him less. <laughs> uh, to look at anomalies for, you know, uh, paint on a car or, you know, something aligned. And, and it does exactly what Melin says, which yes. is, it's going to look at 500 cars, and the 500 first car, it's going to kick it to the side and say there's an anomaly. Yep. You might want to take yep. a look at it. And it's so not saying, it's not saying it's medical. good or bad. It's saying, hey, here's an outlier. Let's take a look. Human, that's and, it. And then, but it's it's sorting through a whole bunch of crap. It's sorting the the, the the ones that are known good, ones that are known bad, and it says here's the list that some somebody else should check. Yeah, and, and, and that's all it is. It's probably the same thing with medical world and everything else. Right, Jeff's got a serious question. Well, no, I just I just I like digging into the you know the investment portfolio and pulling out Deep Look and saying is this an example of what you're talking about, right? So Deep Look is designed to use um, he's pitching a company pixel differentiation, right? To look at and see is there something there that the that the doctor can't see currently but spend six hours in the dark looking for that they just can't see it they can't see it, they're blind to it it's like looking for a different spectrum of light that we're not able to see but it sees it it labels it and it says that's a problem area now tell the doctor you know i just saved you an hour of your time now go talk to your patient about this problem area that's what it's doing i have a different question let me check so, so let, me, let me let me give an example very similar to what you just said said jeff right you know, highway eight classes, right? When we are driving, right, and we are going on the same road, at some point we become insensitive to what we are seeing because we are seeing the same image over and over, right? Yeah. And that's when actually an accident could occur because you know we have lost that sensitivity. Imagine the same thing happening with the radio. They are seeing images after images after images. At some point, they're going to wear out, and in fact, they, they are burning out. Sure. But wouldn't it be nice if you could tell, don't worry about this image, just focus on this image, yep. and even better, focus on this area of the image. That's where I feel the problem is. Yep. Yep. Now you are making a better utilization of your limited radiologist that we have available. I Amen. think that's a way to put it. Amen. 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 Okay. Yep. And when you match that with some unmet need, in this case, the shortage of radiologists and the long hours and the time in the dark and all of a sudden burnout and blah, 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 we're solving problems with AI in a very specific specific way and that's I think where the future is going to go where we're learning now about what it can potentially do and then eventually it's going to be used to help us find these unmet needs and okay. solve so I have problems. a comment on that and has some words of wisdom for us. Hit me. Um, I mean I, I was just gonna say at this point it's more like a more like an assistant than a director because the majority of this time we were talking about yeah you know co-pilot. Yeah yeah co exactly. oh god right. co-pilot. Yeah. Except for yeah, uh, a friend of mine at the gym told me about a company, I won't name it now, okay. that does a defense oriented AI and it's literally piloting drones, piloting, targeting, firing weapons. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a problem, right? Yeah, and, and in those cases, the operators or the individuals that the AI is assisting right. have between one and two seconds to yay or nay those targets. Right. Yeah. And sometimes no, no time is given to those operators, right? right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, in certain circumstances, and I think we're talking about the same theater. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, it's just war fighting. It's, it's yeah, 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 drones firing at people and things. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I think that's the scariest part. That's what people are mostly scared. Less so about the, uh, I think the medical example because I think you know Melinda. Yeah, no, Ter Terminator is here and it's got wings and Melinda's going to say something intelligent. Okay. Yeah, let's let's stay with this one, right? Um, so I actually am worried let's about this drone target. Targeting, uh, targeting individual, right? Yep. Uh, from a different stand, from I have problems with the technology, I have problems with the application, yep. but I have a bigger problem with misuse, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, mm -hmm. I, what is happening is these edge cases. And by the way, deep fakes obviously is common, but sure. drone technology is not as common. Thank God. Mm -hmm. What I'm worried about is this negative fix is giving a bad rep to a very good technology, sure. right? 
Now, what is happening is because of this bad, what is regulation, FDA or FAA or what are these guys going to do, right? These are bureaucratic organizations. Sure. As soon as somebody talks to them, they're just going to put so much obligation on the de on the designer that we'll actually lose the real benefit of AI. Yep. And then we'll be de dealing with these edge cases that will never happen, you know. Let's not worry about Skynet. That's not going to happen. That is really not the risk. Oh, really? Damn. The risk is... The, the risk is actually deep fakes, that I worry. Yeah, yeah. But the value that it will provide in, in, in healthcare, in finance, in retail, in art, in science, is like orders of magnitude better than the risk. I got it, I got it, I, I, I agree. I, I'm still investing in an invisibility cloak because okay. they, they make those now too. So where you can have a drone flying by you and you can have essentially a green screen that shields you from it being able to see you as a target. Right. Okay, another question. So sure. the, we have the infamous um, thing, you didn't catch on to this last time, but we in our last podcast with I think it was with Bill Gates, um, we talked about all the rusty cars along the road. Oh yeah. It, okay. you, well, now you say you know it. You didn't. Know, oh, you remember? We talked, you too, you we talked about, about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is not. Bill, Bill wasn't a fan. name. The the Greek mythology. It must have been Greek, where everybody saw in some like mountain or this thing yeah. whatever they wanted to see that was wonderful. Yeah. Is, is it that Emperor's New Clothes or Myth of Sisyphus? Yeah, Myth exactly. Myth of Sisyphus. Myth of Sisyphus. Um, <laughs> They, so to what Man extent? What? To what extent are we all looking at AI as? He's oh, I'm stuff. sure it'll be wonderful. Whatever it is, none of us really know. But we right now we have ChatGPT. It's like, which, oh yeah, I see it. And, and uh, we have machine learning, which the the ML subcategory, which I tend to think of as more industrial. It's obviously not only industrial, but smaller data sets that seems useful. But then the big ChatGPT and generative AI seems a lot a lot of garbage. And you're correct to say it's bringing money. It's bringing investment dollars. In and it's bringing excitement in. Yeah. But to what extent are people then saying, oh, I'm sure this wonderful thing will solve all my problems next year? It's just another tool. It's just another no, tool. But, but, but I'm just wondering whether we're. Can I, yeah. So, can I say something, right? So, when the calculator was invented, when the calculator was invented, did we have so much hype? Did we worry that, oh, this is all the accountants are going to go we did? No. In fact, now. I was the accountants can can go run much faster scans with the calculator because they would take time to fudge the numbers on the paper. Now they can fudge the numbers faster, right? The same thing when the when the horse carriage was uh, replaced with an automobile. Did we suddenly did people lose jobs? No. What has happened is we have transformed those jobs to something different. Right. So right. to me, AI is just a tool. I don't know what's a big deal about it. I agree. Stop getting so worked up. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. When the calculator came it's out, I think I was in high school, um, or it was a little middle before school. that. School. But the yeah, middle school. Um, but I don't remember all this hype over the calculator. It was it's a useful 50, tool, 50. and that was the end of it. <laughs> um, I feel like AI, Chat GPT in particular, is generating much more excitement than it deserves. And then in the end, we need to sort of sit it's back. It's a shiny object of this calendar year. Maybe so, so, our so, teachers always so, said we wouldn't always have a calculator in our pocket. Though. Hold on, hold on. So. Yeah. There is a lot, so there is two things, right? One is the risk and the reward, right? The reward from AI is tremendous, there is no question. I, we can talk for hours on that. The risk is also there. But you know what the biggest risk was in human history? Is the invention of the fire or the invention of the wheel. Because how many car accidents do we see now? Should we have stopped the wheel from being designed? Probably. Should we have stopped the there. fire from being invented because of the risk of fire hazard? Yeah. So the way I'm pushing it is just like fire and a wheel, AI yeah, is just another tool that we, we have just evolved over time and we are, we are just coming up with smarter tools. Yeah, but I think like, this tool can actually take us out. I mean, that's that's my point is that once it's once it's it's smart enough and it's it's seen enough, you could say the same thing about turn the fire. The fire could take you out too. The fire will take you out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, but it's not. It doesn't have a mind. We don't have intelligent fire yet, though. I don't know. The speed right. of propagation is faster where they are. So first of all, how many people die in a fire every year? Do we know? I'm sure a lot. How many people die in a car accidents every year? Even I more. Think in yeah, I'm sure. Thousands, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So, so the, to me is. You didn't mention Bowie. No. There is this. No. I, I think. Look, I, I grew up watching Terminator movies. I, I, I watch them like five. I can watch the same episode like five times. Yeah. But let's not get carried away into this is going to take over the world. And I think that's fair. Like, I, I don't want to be a fear monger. I, I went to a trade show last year. It was the robotics side of device talks. And I ran into a, a, a former client, and he was there at, um, what was he at? Uh, 
What's the uh, day? Is it day salt systems? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and right. Boston Robotics. Yeah, the salt and they and they were showing off their robot dogs and and everybody was around and it's like, oh, that's cute. Look at it rolled over and look at it did this and did that. And then last week I see one with a flamethrower. So I think there's yeah. there's a problem when these things are then being weaponized and and yeah. set on well, populations. Yeah, well, you won't feel that way. And I feel that way if those dogs end up moving Putin out of uh, Crimea. I would feel better about it if they were put to good use. Yeah, well, that's absolutely. Yeah, but if some of the makers have mandated, like Boston Dynamics, you cannot use it for uh, military applications. Sure, well, sure. No, understood. Sales. Understood. Oh, that's good. And so, and that's yeah, what he yeah. told me. I was like, these are going to be turned on us someday. He's like, no, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. And I was like, I'm watching this in real time. They're they're deploying them in Los Angeles now, like literally deployed in Los Angeles, and yeah. these things shoot bullets. Right? They're, yeah. they're not they're not well, harmless. Are they, they helping protect some of the population that wouldn't get enough police protection anyway? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. So, 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 Jeff, to answer your question, right? Yeah. The problem here is not a technology. The problem here is a person who's going to misuse that technology. Absolutely. So yeah. to so to to me, giving this robot with a flamethrower and and, and and a blazing gun is irresponsible human that is doing that. You're blaming the robot for their distributor, right? That robot right. could be used in to sure. a, a landmines, yeah. but they could be in coal mines and digging coal and natural resources. And, and I think, they, yeah, yeah, I think Einstein and Oppenheimer would have said the same thing. You know, I, I had this yeah. thought process and it led to this invention, and now I have become deaf. I mean, we, we don't have morals as a group to limit those uses or, you know, somehow build in a kill switch so that if this thing turns on a human, it's not able to execute, right? So, so I, I think, you know, so there are, so we're putting too much I'm faith actually, in humanity. So, so Jeff, I'm really, really glad we are actually going in this direction on this discussion because this is very, very pertinent, right? Um, you, you mentioned Oppenheimer, right? There is positive uses of technology and negative. There's always going to be there. I think the key question is, are we as humans smart enough to use a very complex tool? No. And the answer is, <laughs> the answer is no. Uh, no. No, we know the answer is no. 150,000% no. It's so, always gone wrong. If the, if the answer yeah. is no, then to me, um, we have our ethical our obligations. Go ahead. What then, do you then want? Our doom is imminent. I, I, there's no question. Well, wait a minute. So, right? you're Melinda. You're you're telling me that you think humans are smart enough. What about bump stocks and everything else? What about what about the use of uh, uh, automatic uh, uh, or just machine corruption. guns yeah. in uh, that are available to the general public? Yeah. So we yeah. know humans I'm are. Agree. Actually, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe you misunderstood. I'm agreeing with you. Well, Many of us are not smart. Many of us are not more than hoping. But, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right? Let me okay. say what it's all. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, what I'm hoping is that people who create this, those open hammer hangers of the AI world, right? What I'm hoping is that they will put enough checks and balances so that this can go. This will not. Yeah, but they're not going to do well. that, and, and hope is not a plan. Yeah, hope is not a plan. I'm, I'm even more nervous than I was before. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Just, Wait a minute. I have this, this, is a great, this, is a great, this is a great line of conversation. I, I, this is even more important. Okay. <laughs> do you like the Transformers? If you like, um, if you like uh, the what do you call know, Skynet Sorry. and all that? Trans the Autobots. Do, yeah, the Autobots. Do you like like the Decepticons? Oh, all of them. Do you like the Transformers? Those movies. Okay. It is interesting you mentioned the word transformer. Okay, so oh, I'm just going to try to make it serious. I love it. I don't know, no, 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 seriously. So. As an electrical engineer, transformer meant something to me, right? It's yeah. just it's, you, know, you convert one voltage to another using magnetic energy, right? Yeah, That's yeah. what I learned as a transformer. Now, it turns out, I you know, watching this trans the transformer robots, you know. Yeah, Bumblebee. Bumblebee, right? And Optimus Prime. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know that a deep learning architecture? On which, on, on which generative AI is based on, it is a, it's called a transformer architecture. Do you oh, yes. Know that? Yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yes. 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 Transformer, I thought that's what you referred to, but actually you are referring to Bumblebee. No, I'm talking about yes. So, how do you like those movies? Do you like them? Oh, I love them. Yeah, yeah they're great, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, you're, all right. All right. Should we wrap this so up? Wait, 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 so, how, we how close on the yeah. doomsday clock are we to midnight? Oh, we're, we're, we're past. past. We're just we're pushing. Past. We're, we're it's a new day. It's a new day, then. Yeah. Right? We made it to we're, a new we're day. We're a state on the pavement already. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. So uh, here's, here's another question. So, uh, you know, the, the next, the next president of the world, Elon Musk, says we're living in a simulation. And we've you already we've already reached that singularity, and that what we're experiencing now is a simulation. You know, so your first well, mistake is listening to Elon. No, no, that's true. That's true. I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm being facetious. Spots, I'm being facetious. You guys do. But I watch these cyber trucks drive down the road, and I watch Tesla it's rockets probably. take off, or SpaceX rockets, or Tesla cars driving by in every direction now. You know, this guy is given a lot of um, grace, I guess, grace. in terms of For the... Oh, he's yeah. given a lot of space, yes. Yeah, a lot of space, yeah. a lot of grace by our, our population that's already decided that Elon does more good than harm, and therefore everything that he does is in the category of good. He controls our satellites and everything else. I wouldn't say that he does is good. believes... No, no, he doesn't, but generally we've, we've come to accept that, well, he's, he's for the greater good. He's well, trying you know, to invent new stuff. See, I think this is a different, different podcast. Uh, but, this, but this individual believes... I'm rolling my eyes. ...that we live in a simulation. We can see. We can see. That's like his, yeah. his, his belief What's system. your point? I don't know. Do, do we live in a simulation, so, Lund? No. So, so um, I, I want to make one quick point here, right? Um, so, I don't know if since you, since you love listening to Elon Musk... No, I don't. I don't. That's my point. He does. I, I was he being does. facetious. He's he a super villain. thousand dollar toilet. No, no. He's a super villain. playing. Elon Musk had nothing to do with the veil. Yeah, he does. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, he is mentioned... Uh, there's something called period of abundance. Have you, have you heard about that? Uh, so what, again, I'm, I'm, I'm just simply quoting him, what he's saying is, there will be a point in time where most machines will be able to do our day-to-day mundane tasks, yep. right? Yep. As a result, humanity will flourish, you know, we'll all have food on the table, robots will be doing the farming, we'll be doing the That's mining. That's Harlan Ellis. Imagine. That's Harlan yeah. Ellis. I know. That's, that's, who he's, that's, who he's, that's who he's reading. Yeah. I feel like that's just going to make so us what he's saying is, that period we call, will be called age of abundance, where we'll work if we want to, but if not, maybe we can just do painting, we can read, we can do leisure. They'll get stoned. Everyone will be stoned. Yeah. Who's not stoned today? Oh. <laughs> wow, the rates are just going up. Keep so, going. But, but this age of evidence, uh, I don't think that's going to happen the way he describes it. No. But I like the idea. I well, like the idea of not having to do mundane tasks. I like the idea of looking outside my window and appreciating the trees and the nature and the plants and the forest. What are you that. smoking? So there was there was a movie that came out in 2000. It was called Idiocracy. Oh no! And, and I believe that we're much. Again. I think well, we're much. You can only pitch that movie in one. one episode. Episode. Oh, we did it in the last one too. Yeah, yeah. I am sorry. You exceeded your quota. Oh, All right. Well, I can't mention. Yeah, we already talked about that. Example. That was when we, when we interviewed Elon Musk. I thought that was a Bill Gates I guess episode. Sam will look at but but my point is this age of abundance and this this uh, euphoric you know future state that that we're all looking towards is like oh it'll be better in the future because of technology. I don't buy that. I think we're going to be dead long before that. Oh yeah, I think we're going to be sticks like, and stones yeah. pretty soon. Can we have Ben wrap this up for us a bit? Ben, yeah, <laughs> summarize <laughs> summarize what you learned today. Wrap, wrap wrap this whole thing. Oh, I mean, Lon has one last point. Yeah, yeah go for it. Jeff, um, I just realized something. Sure. I was watching a YouTube video and they defined a term something called, just like you have escape velocity for sure. on Earth, right? You, yep. you have to go with a certain thrust, otherwise you cannot escape right. Earth's gravitational force, right? Yep. Well, so there is something like 26,000 miles an hour. Life. So there is another term that somebody coined, I'm, I wish I could, it's not coming back, but the, what they're saying is, we are easing at a certain rate, right? I mean, every day, by one day, yep. right? Every day we have by one day. Now, at some point we're going to die, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, our healthcare and and precision medicine and all that are also growing very rapidly because of AI. Sure. Mm-hmm. So what they are saying is, imagine that these are two graphs where we are aging at a certain rate. Yep. Right. And and the technology is going at a certain rate. Yep. Okay. When they intersect, you know what is going to happen? We will be able to stay stagnant at that age, meaning we, we, will, not, we will not age. Yeah, that was like a 2006 Justin Timberlake movie called Just In Time, I believe it was called. Just In Time. Yeah, Just In Time. It's a good movie. But basically, right. the premise is at the age of 26, Justin you Timberlake. stop aging. Yeah. You stop aging. And if you can afford to, you can buy in more credits 
to right. continue to live. And you can live to be 400, 800, 900. This is, You're immortal. This is my point. Because healthcare fixes it. discussion with everybody. It's like the reason I'm not on a Rorschach test. Everybody sees what they want to see in it. Possibly. It's magic. Well, okay, I think that's how any innovation happens, right? Yeah. We we become what we think about, right? That you know, man becomes what he thinks about. And if we can imagine it, if we can imagine riding on a light beam like Einstein did, then we can imagine in theory, you know, what the speed of light is. Melinda, can we have uh, Ben wrap this up? All right, Ben. All right, there's, one, summarize. there's one last point. There's, 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 there's one any, last point. Are there any coherent points? Well, yeah, no. one yeah, last point. Right. 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 So, 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 I mean, one thing I want to talk about is because when you were talking about... Um, <laughs> this will never end. <laughs> never end, never end. No, we're good. We got seven minutes. Um, you mentioned, you know, it would take out all the mundane tasks that we'd have to do all the time. Uh, we already have a bunch of things that are sucking up our time in the first place, so... So, yes. I, I mean, to say that, that anyway. yeah, that too. But to say that we would actually use that time for anything better than just sitting that's around on our phone all day, yeah, that's kind of that's hoping. That, that's why it's too much. Was embedded was to suck the productivity out of everything. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that, yeah. that's and Facebook. That's actually partially why I think that. that you know, okay, say, can you summarize in what, what, um, what you one paragraph? What, what, what did anybody with that half a brain cell learn? What, what you learned is don't get a room with three angry <laughs> Uh, AI is terrifying. There's a lot of money involved, and uh, it's worse than Bitcoin at this point. Bitcoin's done. Okay, Malin, any <laughs> thoughts before we um, wrap it? Call it a wrap. Uh, so first, uh, it was a pleasure chatting with you guys. Is it what you thought? Be honest. <laughs> So, so one thing I, I, I do want to end with a note that I think there are more positives than negatives in, in this area of AI research. Um, I tend to be an optimistic person and I think there are more good people than bad people on earth. So I believe good sense will prevail and I'm really uh, optimistic that we'll get more business value, our healthcare will improve. The risks can and will be mitigated is where my is my is where I currently stand. I think the so negative information to yep. be asked what you think are not. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm open to changing my opinion, but my current position is that this will be a favorable future. The negative is so potentially negative, and the number of people who need to be bad to take advantage of it is so high, and the likelihood of what you're saying happening in terms of um, keeping that from happening is fairly low. So we're gonna, we're gonna let's all keep our fingers crossed. We're going to change Dave's diaper, but I, I will uh, thank you, Melin, for joining us today, and uh, we appreciate you sharing your expertise. It's an awesome to spend time with you. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time on Innovation Black. Thanks, everyone. All right.